Welcome to I Learned a Thing in the Bathroom from Dollar Shave Club, where we explain something very complicated in mere minutes to occupy your brain while you shave. In this edition, we'll be answering the question, what's all our different body hair actually for? As explained by someone who sounds smart because he's British. Human beings, especially male humans, are covered in a bewildering assortment of body hair. But why? Let's start literally at the top. One possible explanation for why we have such thick head hair comes from the fact that our human ancestors evolved as coastal dwellers, gathering food from the sea. Large amounts of body hair made wading in the water more difficult, so those with less body hair had an evolutionary advantage. But since our heads had to be held above the water to breathe, the hair on our heads was never affected one way or the other. What about eyebrows and nose hair? What's their deal? As well as keeping sweat out of your eyes, eyebrows play an important role in facial recognition. A study by an MIT behavioral neuroscientist found that people could recognize photos of celebrities with the eyes removed 60% of the time. But when it was the eyebrows that were removed, that dropped to 46%. Your nose hairs, meanwhile, are there to help filter the air going into your lungs, as well as humidifying the air by collecting moisture. This stops your respiratory system from drying out and making you cough. (coughs) So why the heck do we have this shaggy chin hair? Beards are something of a mystery, although one study claims that it's for social reasons. It compares the beard to a lion's mane, stating that male lions without manes are attacked more often and have less success with females. If something similar was true of our ancestors, it was a good reason for beards to stick around. Please give me one good reason why we have hair in our armpits. I'll give you three. One, it wicks sweat away from the skin. Two, it prevents chafing by reducing friction between the underarms and the torso. And three, it actually helps to distribute our musky, sweaty pheromones to potential mates. Lovely. What about chest hair? For primitive man, chest hair was the first line of defense against parasites crawling into the skin, acting as both a barrier and a way of increasing sensitivity in the area, since you're more likely to feel a bug crawling there when it's also disturbing all the hairs in the area. So why don't women have hairy chests? That's probably just sexual selection. Presumably a woman was once born without chest hair. Cave dudes decided they were into it, she had more babies, The gene got passed down to more women who were also considered more attractive, etc, etc. Evolution, in other words. Okay, we can't put it off any longer. Let's talk about pubes. Pubic hair provides a valuable service as a friction buffer. Two bushes rubbing together are far less likely to cause redness and irritation than two patches of smooth skin. It can also help prevent the spread of diseases into nearby nooks and crannies. According to Scientific American, cases of both gonorrhea and chlamydia have increased as a direct result of the rise of pubic hair trimming and shaving. Gross! And finally, there's your leg hair, which is little more than a holdover from a time before pants. It kept us warm at night and stopped us getting sunburnt during the day. So you're saying those hair pants I bought were a good investment after all? I'm so glad! Tune in next time for more I Learned a Thing in the Bathroom. And in the meantime, head to dollarshaveclub.com for more podcasts and a big old pile of grooming products.